Max von Neumann here. Today, we are going to solve, by completing the square, a different quadratic equation of a different classification. In particular, when the x term coefficient becomes a fraction. If you haven't seen the lower order example shown in this video, you might want to see it first. So let's get started. We are going to solve 3x squared minus 5x minus 10 equals 0 at lightning speed. Okay, let's roll over this problem. Now note that this equation, this quadratic equation, we have already preset the y equals to zero. So y equals zero here. Is really saying geometrically where we are crossing the x-axis because when y is equal to zero, you're not going up or you're not going down, so you must live on the x-axis. And that's what we're doing. We're solving this to find out where the parabola crosses the x-axis. All right, let's get on with this. The first step, divide by leading x squared coefficient. So the leading x squared coefficient here is three. So we are gonna divide everything by three. Divide by three, divide by three, divide by three, and divide the zero by three, which will get us zero. And rewrite our new statement. So our new statement is x squared minus five thirds x minus 10 thirds equals zero. Okay, next step. Keep variable on the left side and move the constant to the right side. The constant here is negative 10 thirds. Essentially, we get rid of it here by adding 10 thirds and adding 10 thirds. Okay, let's quickly show what we have here and we'll leave a empty space for the completing of the square. So this is what we have now. Okay, so I put these blank spots here because after we complete the square, that's uh, when we complete it, we're gonna square and put the number in there. So third step, the next step, take half of the x term coefficient, square it, and add it to both sides. Okay, so this is where I like to have my little sidebar up here. So what I do on my sidebar, my x term coefficient is this negative 5 thirds, and we're going to take half of it and then square it. So here's my negative 5 thirds. I'll call this the sidebar. This is where I'm gonna do my side work. And I'm gonna write negative 5 thirds and we're gonna multiply that by 1 half. That's taking half of it. Dividing by 2 or multiplying by 1 half is essentially the same thing. And this is equal to negative 5 6 and then we have to square it. This is where we get the completing of the square part to get 25, 36. We're gonna complete here by adding 25, 36 to this side. And to keep the equation balanced, we add 25, 36 to this side. Okay, our next step. 
factor the perfect square on the left side using the saved number up here. I'll show you the saved number in a second. And then do the math on the right side. Okay, so the saved number. This is the save here. Okay, so this is easy to factor. If you've saved this negative five, six, you can demonstrate it by just uh, multiplying x minus five, six times x minus five, six uh, times itself. You can do a demonstration just to prove it's true, but that's gonna get you this up here. So a good way to test yourself is multiply this you know, do a uh, multiplication x minus five, six times x minus five, six, and make sure you get this back. Every time you get it back, you know you're doing it correct. Okay, now on this side, we have to just do the math over here. Sometimes people find it a little difficulty because that's why this is the next uh, stage or a different classification is because if you have a fraction here, people get a little more confused sometimes. All right, so what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna quickly add these. I'm gonna sidebar this. So 10 thirds plus 25, 36. Okay, so 10 thirds plus 25, 36. Now some teachers skip this because they're like either tapping it into your calculator or they claim, well, you should know your, fra you know, your fractions, be able to add them. But we need to you know, clarify as much as we can. Now, if you multiply by one, you don't change the value. So we're gonna multiply this by one, this 10 thirds, but it's gonna be a sneaky one. We're gonna do a video on a sneaky one at another point in time. But imagine here that you just multiply by 12 over 12. So I'm gonna put, uh, right here, I'm gonna put 12 over 12. That's why I call it a sneaky one. Because 12 over 12 is one, and one times anything's still the same. But when you multiply the top, you're gonna to get 120 over 36, hence getting the, I picked 12 for a reason because I need the common denominator. 12 times three is 36 plus 25, 36. And then when I add the tops, we're ultimately gonna get 120, so it's gonna be one, 145 over 36. Okay, so over here, after we do the mathematics on the right-hand side, we're gonna get 145 over 36. 145 over 36. All right, now the next step. Take the square root of both sides while putting a plus or minus sign in front of the square root sign on the right hand side. So I'm gonna take the square root of both sides here. The square root undoes the square. That's the whole point of this. So if I take the square root of this side in red, and then I take the square root of this side, make sure to put a plus or minus in front of that. Plus or minus indicating this two up here means that we're gonna have two solutions. So the two solutions are in particular where the two spots where it's crossing the x-axis. Of course, we're gonna have uh, cases where it either touches the x-axis or, or it doesn't touch it at all, but we'll discuss those ones at a later time. All right, let's take the square root of this. If I take the square root of this, remember the square root undoes the square, so we are going to get x minus five, six equals, and let's clean this up right now. The square root of 36 here is six on the bottom. So I'm gonna put that on the bottom, that comes out. The plus or minus is still there. And then we can't get the 145 out of the square root. There's nothing inside there that's a perfect square. 
So essentially what we have right now is we have x minus 5 sixths is equal to plus or minus the square root of 145 over 6. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to add 5 sixths to both sides. So essentially I'm going to add 5 sixths here and add 5 sixths here. So let's carry this up to the top here. Let's carry this up to where we have some empty space. All right. So now what I'm going to do is, again, what, it, what we're going to do is add 5, 6 to both sides. So let me see if I can squeeze this in. Add 5, 6 to this side, which nullifies it, because this is the next step where we isolate the x on the left-hand side by adding or subtracting the constant. This is the constant here. And then over here, we're adding 5, 6. When we get our bigger board, we're going to be able to work this a little better. I can stretch this out. All right, so this goes away. And what's going to leave over here is x equals, we've isolated the x, and then it's going to be 5, 6, plus or minus square root of 145 over 6. Or we can, oh, by the way, this 5, 6 here is going to be your axis of symmetry. You might have learned it already as a negative b over 2a, but if you just do the, if you just do completing the square and you can isolate this little part over here, the negative b and the quadratic formula in the future, but if you can isolate that, that's the, that's the axis of symmetry because what's going on here is you're adding this amount to 5, 6 and you're subtracting that amount from the 5, 6 and you know that it's from a, point of symmetry because the parabola is symmetrical. So we can already locate that. Now other people like to write this as using the common denominator of a six. So you can either find, if you're looking for solutions in the back of your book, it could be either one of these. I don't uh, have a favorite in particular. They're both good for me. So this is the other way of writing it. 5 plus or minus the square root of 145 over 6. All right, now we would go to our calculator at this point. Maybe that's the answer that they want on your test or on your homework. But we're interested more from, a, I guess, an engineering point of view or something that we want to know where this is on the graph. So I need that square root of 145. So I would put in square root of 145 into my calculator. And as you see, the square root of 145 is going to be 12.04. So let's write that over here real quickly. Square root of 145 is approximately 12.04. Okay, so let's uh, quickly do the math. Of course, we're going to be using our calculator for a lot of these, but you know, we want to, we want to really indicate here uh, what is what. So let's separate these. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. So I like to separate 5 plus square root of 145 is equal 6. But remember, that's 12.04. So it's going to really be, the one of the x's is going to be 5 plus 12.04. over six, and the other x is going to be five minus 12.04 over six. All right, so now we know we have these, uh, these two solutions here. These are our solutions in particular, but what we want to do is 
we want to do the quick math in the calculator and I'll just go ahead and punch these out for you. This X here is going to end up being X equals 2.84. Again, when y equals zero, and this one over here is gonna be negative 1.17. So this one's gonna be x equals negative 1.17. Seven again when y equals zero. And when we look at it on a graph, we see right here our axis of symmetry. And then you see where the parabola is crossing at x equals negative 1.17 approximately and also where x approximately equals 2.84. That squashes that problem. I hope we accomplished getting all the necessary details in at lightning speed, or said in German, Lichtgeschwindigkeit. Every day, we work hard to reach our goal at Alien Institute to help build the scientific problem solvers of tomorrow. If you haven't done so already, strike the like, subscribe, and tap that notification bell. Thank <laughs> you.